So the finale being the most important part of your display, it's what everybody's going to remember when they leave. Um, you want to really incorporate redundancy uh, into your finale setup. So we're going to give a couple examples on when uh, redundant uh, quick matching will come into play for your finale setup. Um, so let's say, for instance, we have uh, two chains of five shells each. So we have 10 total shells that are going to fire on a single queue. Now, in most cases, uh, you're going to have enough electric matches where you can fire both of those uh, chains uh, with its own electric match. So for this first scenario, we'll assume that. Uh, let's say the electric match was firing both chains from the other side of the rack. What we can do to ensure that if there's a break in the quick match along the chain on one chain, that it can still receive fire from the other direction by redundantly matching uh, the back end of the chain together. But in general, you want to minimize cutting because you never know if there was an electric match left over in there. So definitely always uh, keep all parts of your body uh, away from the muzzle of the gun when you're doing this. Um, you'll notice you have a safety cap on the end of the quick match. Go ahead and remove that. Uh, and you can see the other side, we have an opening. Key is you want to make sure you have black match on black match. A lot of times you'll have multiple layers of paper. Make sure you don't get the match in between those layers of paper. Go ahead and uh, insert one match into the other, <clears throat> making sure you have match on match. And the next thing you want to do is cover any exposed uh, black match with masking tape. This is also doubling to secure the two pieces of match together. You typically always want to do at least uh, three inches of masking tape on either side of your connection, being that quick match is really violent when it fires, um, and you don't want this separating before the fire has uh, had a chance to make its way through. And in this particular scenario, since we're interfacing uh, through the other safety cap, we'll add a little bit of extra uh, uh, masking tape on this side to keep it secure as well. So this particular scenario, one E-match in each chain on the other side of the rack, and we have the other end of it redundantly spliced. If we only had one E-match to fire it, we could do the same thing, um, or we could also redundantly splice the other side if we're only using one E-match to give us that little extra redundancy. Something to consider though is every additional splice is going to increase the rate of fire of your finale chain. And when a show is scripted, there's a certain amount of delay that's uh, scripted into uh, between every shot. So if you're adding so much redundancy that you're increasing the rate of fire such that you're creating black sky in between each shot, uh, that's something you want to consider when you're coming up with your, your scheme for redundant matching. So in a scenario where you have an entire rack of 25 shots that you want to fire on a single cue, whether it's hand fire or electric, uh, electrically fired display, um, you can do what's called the serpentine method, uh, which is uh, pretty traditional for maintaining a, a desirable rate of fire, <clears throat> where let's say we initiated here with the electric match or a road flare, and uh, the fire would travel that way. We'd have that end spliced as, you, as we did uh, previously. Then the fire would travel this way down this chain. And then we would splice this here. And the fire would travel this way down this chain. And it would basically serpentine through the entire rack uh, in that fashion. Um, another method if you wanted a higher rate of fire and or to add a little more redundancy is you could splice the quick match uh, along uh, this way as well. So you can do that on one side, you can do it on both sides, just keeping in mind that there's a redundancy versus rate of fire trade-off.